Hello and welcome to another brief demo of Papyrus in the Lunar Release. Today we'll be looking at something a little different. It is install creating a development environment for working on the Papyrus sources using Oomph. So let's get started by launching the Oomph installer, which we have downloaded previously from the Oomph project. And we'll base our Papyrus development environment on the Eclipse standard SDK, the Lunar Release. Now, because the Oomph model of Papyrus is still in development, it is not yet available in the official Oomph project catalog. So we need to download it separately, the model, and install it in our local Oomph environment. So we do that by just drag and drop like so. Now we get the Papyrus model with components of three different kinds. The main Papyrus component that is uh, required for working on the Papyrus sources. For people working on the Papyrus developer tools, so the, the development time uh, code generation tools, debugging aids, that sort of thing. Not part of the product. They can install the developer project additionally. And then for all of the various extra components that are delivered by Papyrus separately from the main Papyrus bundle, uh, we can install uh, the sources and dependencies required for any of those. So let's go ahead and install the main one, which we need to. And we see here there are two streams currently defined, the Luna maintenance uh, release stream and the master for the next release, which will be Mars. As it happens, throughout the summer now, the Papyrus project is focused on the first service release of Luna on the master branch. So um, this distinction isn't really uh, manifest yet in <clears throat> in the Git repository, and the stream, the only stream that really makes sense at this point is the Luna stream. And because I'm interested in it, I'll also install the CDO integration component for now. So the next step is asking some uh, slotting in some variables, where to create our IDE install, where to create the workspace. Now there are some more details here that um, aren't evident in this page. I've installed other um, other OOMF-based IDEs uh, before, so I've already answered questions like, what's the parent folder for OOMF installs? What's the parent folder for uh, the workspaces of oomph installs that um, what is your git user id that sort of thing i've already answered those questions so let's go and create the papyrus uh, uh, ide let's call it that and the papyrus dev workspace we'll call it that and let's clone the read write ssh repository with garrett so as we see uh, i don't need to supply the git user id variable because i've done that before with other oomph installs okay so now we see what is oomph going to do to bootstrap a new ide installation so it'll create a workspace for it install a bunch of uh, basic uh, features. Some more that we need to do our Papyrus development. Some of uh, our Papyrus development activities actually involve modeling functions of various kinds. Uh, some Eclipse Ini setup and that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and finish that. So right now uh, Oomph is busy running the P2 director to download and install a bunch of Eclipse features. 
And there we go. We have a uh, a new IDE ready to go. And it's in the process of launching. Here it is. And once this IDE, IDE has uh, launched, it continues setting itself up. So we have some more uh, features to install now that we've completed the bootstrap process. And then, oh, unsigned content, the oomph, yeah, that's all unsigned. Uh, so let's do that. And then there will be a raft of uh, preference settings to set, things like the Papyrus Teams standard oh uh, looks like we need to restart first okay so we'll discuss that in a moment so having installed some more oomph tooling we need to uh, restart again before we continue with the the oomph setup all right so we're ready to continue again and the oomph setup resumes automatically. So it's setting up a bunch of uh, workspace preferences, things like the Papyrus Project's standard code formatter profile, uh, compiler settings, that sort of thing. Now we're ready to clone the Git repository, so we need um, my passphrase. Nice long passphrase. Okay. So this will take a while. We can twiddle our thumbs, have a coffee, feed our cat. Okay, it looks like our good clone is just about ready. Well, there we are. Checked out the master branch, which is the branch that the Luna stream, as mentioned before, is working on. And now we start importing the source projects into the workspace from this git clone that we just created. And we set up some Mylin queries for Bugzilla, Garrett reviews, and Hudson builds. Import some more projects that configure the PDE target for all the various dependencies of Papyrus that we need to compile our Papyrus sources against. So that's a bunch more of P2 activity on various repositories. Happily, a lot of this is actually cached locally in a bundle pool that is maintained by Oomph. It's a very kind feature. So you notice this is uh, a lot of work that a developer might have had to do, but it's entirely hands-off as far as we're concerned. It's all prescribed by the model and uh, we just click a few buttons and away we go. So that completes the target platform. Then we create some working sets to organize all of the various projects and look at that, in uh, 500 seconds. So let's finish that and see what we have. Oh, so we have a workbench that gives us a query of all the open bugs currently on this stream of Papyrus, open enhancement requests, so uh, different severity, Garrett reviews that are pending, 
and also all of the bugs that have been resolved and currently there are no bugs that have the uh, review flag requested. I can show the Mylan builds view to see the status of the Papyrus builds. Looks great. And then we have all of the, the various projects. So we've got the core Papyrus projects. We've got the whole HTML layer there. All those diagrams and text editing and stuff. We've got uh, the table editor infrastructure. We've got some various view plugins, model explorer, properties. Uh, we've got all the feature definitions. We've got test plugins. We have our CDO integration layer. Look at that complete with the feature definitions and the test uh, plugins all collected together for this extra component. And we also have the release engineering, which includes a new thing, the Papyrus Oomph setup model. There it is. So that is a ready to go development environment. And we see uh, compilation completed, no errors we're ready to go. Let's look at some of our uh, settings here. The target platform is this uh, modular oomph definition of a target container, including things like CDO dependencies, uh, the current the latest nightly build of Papyrus is in there so that I can close any number of projects that I'm not working on in order to uh, streamline my workspace, that sort of thing. We have some uh, code style settings. So for new files, we have the CEA uh, copyright header there. For formatting. We have the Papyrus code formatting profile ready to go. So we're just uh, ready to start contributing. Now, it doesn't end there. So say I want to start working. Uh, I There's a some Papyrus code that I don't have yet in my workspace. I need to go get it. So Oomph can help me with that. So I already have this main and the CDO integration component. Well, I want to work on some of the, the C++ code generation too. So why don't we just add that? Say next. Nothing more to ask. We already have our install location. We already have our Git repository. We have our workspace. It's all there. Uh, Oomph doesn't need to know anything more. It just needs to go ahead and do it. So there will be some C++ code generation dependencies to install things like CDT. There might be some more uh, tooling to install that we didn't have before. Certainly there'll be more projects to import from the, the extra uh, plugins area and some more working sets to configure like the code, C++, uh, C++ code gen working set. So we'll just uh, tell it to restart whenever it's uh, ready to go. So there it goes, woo, that was fast. There it comes back. So that was just some bootstrapping work to install uh, some more components in the in the workbench. So then we'll have the rest of the setup tasks to, to get through. Uh, importing projects, creating, um, uh, updating the, the PDE target to install uh, CDT in the target, for example because we need to compile, uh, that's a compilation uh, and runtime dependency of our uh, CPP code generation. And then we'll have the working set to create. So 
So lots of intric intricate dependencies that we just don't have to think about. There it is. We have all of our CDT dependencies installed in the target platform. And we're ready to go. We don't even have to restart again. Here we are. Our C++ code generation. Plugins. Features. Tests. All that good stuff. Oh yeah. Let's see, whoever contributed this from Zelixoft might uh, certainly have wanted to have oomph set everything up for him. So there you have it. That is setting up a Papyrus development environment with oomph. Thank you.